Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short problem solving techniques videos. In this video, number 20 in the series, we're going to take a look at run charts. So first of all, what is a run chart? Well, run charts are usually associated with tracking trends. And we use it to allow you to study observed data, and this might be performance measure of, of a process, for trends or patterns over a specified period of time. So it's one of the simplest performance control tools that you could possibly hope to see. And here's an example of a run chart here on the screen, and this plots data, uh, these could be measures of a process, over a period of time. And you can see the brown line going up and down, so we've got peaks and troughs, and we've got quite a lot of variation in the data on this particular chart. So the run chart here in this case here is all about comparing data over a period of time, and this helps us to measure performance and look for trends and patterns. Next, we need to determine what a run chart actually does. So first of all, a run chart helps us monitor the performance of one or more processes over a period of time to detect trends, shifts, or cycles. Secondly, it allows us to compare a performance measure before and after implementation of a solution to measure its impact. So for example, in our chart that we see here, um, if we make a change at the end of the 25 time period here, uh, what's going to happen next? So we can use this to compare the before and after, so to speak. Thirdly, uh, run charts help us to focus attention on truly vital changes in the process. And finally, it also helps us track useful information and we can use it for uh, predicting trends. Next, I need to decide, how do I do it? Well, the first and most obvious thing to do is to decide on the process performance measure that you want to examine and put into your run chart. So this could be uh, returns on a product, number of warranty claims, number of defects, customer complaints, could be weights, measures, volumes, whatever it is, you need to decide what it is that you are going to examine on your run chart. Because remember, you're going to look for trends and patterns to see uh, if performance is acceptable or not. Next, you need to go ahead and gather some data. And I recommend collecting at least 20 to 25 data points to detect meaningful patterns. As always, the more data you have, uh, the more meaningful um, any analysis that you will come out with at the end. Thirdly, you need to go ahead and create a graph with a vertical line, that's the y-axis, and a horizontal line, which is the x-axis. So on the y-axis, draw the scale related to the variable you are measuring and arrange this to cover the full range of measurements and maybe add in a little bit extra. We'll take a look at that in a moment. On the horizontal line, which is the x-axis, is usually time that you put on this. So draw the time uh, on the x-axis in this case. So once I've gathered my data, I can import it into a tool uh, like Excel. And here's a screenshot from Excel 2010. And over on the uh, left-hand side in column B, and now highlighted in red, are a se series of 25 data points gathered over a period of time. So I've got my 25 measures here. And I've plotted the data uh, on a simple line with markers chart drawn in Excel. And on my vertical line, which is the y-axis, I've got my data points here. So you can see um, at the top, a maximum value of 1.6, and at the bottom, a, a minimum value of 0 0.4. And I've plotted these over a period of time. This could be 25 days, it could be 25 hours. It's a measure per each of the time units. Now let's concentrate on the run chart itself. And I've just simply taken this chart from the previous spreadsheet, showing data plotted against time. And remember, this is measuring performance over a period of time. So I want to be able to use this run chart uh, to see if my performance is within or outside of control. So the first thing we can do is calculate the average value, and I've represented that here by the red line. In this case, the average is 1.0 of all these 25 values. And you can see that there's quite a lot of variation on the average. So straight away, um, I'm a bit worried about the performance of this particular process. In fact, only three out of the 25 values um, coincide with the average value. Another thing you can look and do is look for trends. And here's a trend of seven values in a row increasing. And this violates what we call the seven run rule, which states that if there are seven or more values either increasing or decreasing, it means that there is a problem with the process. 
And lastly here, we could also look and see if there's a significant number of values either above or below average. And we can, down in the bottom right hand corner here, we can see that there are eight values in a row which are below average. So once again, this would be a strong indicator that there's a problem with performance with the particular process that this run chart is measuring. Another thing we can do with our run chart is use them to impose upper and lower control limits. So here we have a UCL, which is an upper control limit. Uh, any values above that indicate a serious problem with the process. And we also have an LCL, which is a lower control limit, and any values below that also indicate a serious problem with the process. So we can here with this see with this particular process that our run chart is showing that there are, is one value on the upper control limit and that there is a single value above that. So that's a serious problem. And this run chart is also showing us that on the lower control limit that one value uh, is exactly on the limit. So these uh, upper and lower control limits are also strong indicators that there's a serious problem with this particular process. So up to now our run chart is telling us that there's a problem with the particular process that we're measuring here. And let's say now we make an intervention. And this intervention could be to improve a process, uh, make a change in the process. It could be something like fixing a machine or, or tweaking the way a process works. And in this particular chart here, I've got my initial 25 data points that we've already seen. And I've now got 10 more measurements. I'm going up to 35 measurements of time, so that could be an extra 10 days. And I've got my new measurements showing here on the right-hand side of the chart, um, which measure the performance after the intervention. And if we look at the average, we can see that the uh, measure, new measures are much, much closer to the average line that we've already looked at before. So there's less variation around the average, and that's a good thing. We can also see, if we input our upper control limit line, we can see that all values are well below the upper control limit. And finally, that all values are well within the lower control limit. So we can see now that this particular process, uh, the performance measure, has drastically improved after our intervention. So in this way, we're using control charts to not only measure current performance, we can also use it to measure performance after an intervention, and we can use it to predict future performance based on these measures that you see here. So that's how you use run charts as a problem-solving technique. Uh, my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, covers many problem-solving techniques and strategies. It's uh, published by the Liffey Press and available on Amazon and all online stores. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.